Hello everyone, today I'd like to show you how I made this air conditioning unit water cooled to make it more efficient and so I can use the residual heat to heat up my hot tub. So you can see here that I already removed the housing a bit and the way this air conditioning unit used to work is that it sucked cold air from the room through both condensers to cool them and then blew that heated up air through a hose and out the window. The condensation water that dripped from the evaporator flowed through a hose to a collecting dish where the condensers were standing in. And this propeller type of thing that was attached to the fan motor splattered the water onto the condensers. The then evaporating water helped a lot with removing the heat from the condensers and that way you also got rid of the condensation water. And here you can see where the propeller thing would have been. Ok, so this air conditioning unit normally had a cooling capacity of 9000 BTU, which is about 2600 watts. BTU is short for British Thermal Unit and is part of the Imperial Measurement System. The amount of BTUs that you measure depends on the starting temperature and what you've eaten the day before, so I'm not going to use that. Instead I'm going to use the metric system in this video. Now the fact that it used cold air from the room is not really the problem because it makes the whole cooling cycle more efficient. So you will get that low heat air back at the other end anyway. But the problem is that by blowing air to the outside of your house you create a low pressure in your house which sucks in warm air from the outside which heats up the room. Also the hose through which the air is blown outside becomes very hot again heating the room. Now I believe that this unit had a capacity of 2600 watts but probably half of that energy was sucked back in and radiated off of the hose. This makes it much less efficient than a split system. So to improve its performance I made this air conditioning unit water cooled. So I can transport most of its heat to the outside. And I'm going to use that heat to heat up my hot tub. This way the room is cooled more efficiently and I need less wood to get my hot tub up to temperature. So now let me show you how I did that. So I made this aluminum container to surround the condensers so I can let cold water flow through them to remove the thermal energy. Ok so I've bent the aluminum plate with the help of this uh, press brake if you will. It's uh, made out of oak which is pretty hard so it won't deform under the pressure of the bending aluminum. And this is just a piece of pine, it's a little bit softer which is ok but it would be better if this would be oak too but I didn't have that lying around so I used this. And I used two door hinges, which are just normal hinges. And there are two very important things, is that the angle between these two sides needs to be less than 90 degrees. So you can bend it a little further, so you can make it perpendicular. If you make this exactly perpendicular, then it will always stay a little bit open. And the next important thing is that this hinge needs to be precisely approximately, more or less exactly, at the corner of these lines. Because then this piece will always stay at the same distance from this corner. And that's what you need to make it bend well. And these spacings are for already bent pieces to fit in here so I can bend the other side. And you can only bend uh, thin metal with it. Uh, aluminum uh, one and a half millimeter thick is okay but already quite tough. And maybe one millimeter steel but I think stainless steel is uh, much too tough to be bent this way and I don't think the hinges will hold or at least the position of the hinges so the screws will bend away and will not make a nice bend. To adjust to the plate thickness you can just put some filler under here so this part will go down a bit and it will rotate around this corner at the thickness of the plate and I set this one for a, a one and a half millimeter more or less and I also bent the one millimeter plate with the same spacing and it worked as well because the wood tends to bend away a little much more than steel of course so, um, so that's why it doesn't need to be that accurate
Okay, so the water container is now uh, all riveted together and glued together and sealed, so it's watertight. And I uh, cut this big uh, slot in here so it can fit around this part. Because it's a chunky thing, it's just more convenient to keep it outside. So I will just slide the whole bucket around it and then I will seal everything back up. I also glued on this uh, aluminum plate, this is a one millimeter aluminum plate. So the bucket is going to close it off here and here and at the bottom. And so the cooling water comes in here so it can go to both condensers. So it can flow through this condenser, it can flow through that condenser. It can't go over the top because I will seal this up too. And the, the top of the container will be here. And in the middle I will pump the water out. So that way it can only go through the condenser and that way it will extract the heat. So let's see if it will fit. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so now I only have to make a small opening to make space for these inlet pipes. Then I can put the top on. So the condensers are now completely in the container and you can see here that I made a small slot for these uh, pipes. Well now I can uh, make the lid fit, I need to uh, drill holes all around the edge and I will make an outlet here and an inlet here. So the water will flow in here, go through the condensers and in the middle it will flow out. Okay, the holes are now all drilled and the in and outlet are now glued and screwed. So it's time for assembly. Okay, so this is now all sealed up, now it just needs to cure, and then it's time to see if there are no leaks. Unfortunately I messed up making a time lapse of this, but it's just an aluminum plate glued in and it's riveted on here through the lid and just the rest is all sealed with uh, caulking. And it looks a bit messy, but doesn't really matter, as long as it's watertight. Okay, of course uh, this compressor also needs cooling, um, because uh, if I don't cool it, then the heat that it will generate will be dissipated into the room and that heat of course needs to be removed later so it's better to remove it before it enters the room so I have made this, uh, this cooler, it's not yet finished but it will fit here to the side, I will glue this on with uh, silicone so it uh, will stick to it and it will conduct the heat and you can see that I already glued these parts together with little PVC foam separators so now I'll need to fill up this uh, seam here, so it will be watertight.
So now I'll show you how it works. Okay, so the water comes in here on this side uh, through this flow meter and past this thermometer. And this thermometer is just temporary, just to measure the power output. Then it goes through this pump, which is fed by this 12 volt transformer, which gets its power by the main switch, so that this pump is turned on when the whole unit is turned on. So then the water flows through this hose into the top of this compressor cooler, and then out the bottom and into the bottom of this container. There the water flows through the condensers and out the top here, through this hose and past the second thermometer and that way the heat is removed from the condensers and outside the room. And these two valves are just to close the system off when I'm transporting it. Okay, so now let's turn it on and uh, see what it does. And I'm just circulating this water through this bucket, so this is now simulating my hot tub. Let's get the air bubble out. Okay, so now the air is out of the pump, so the system is ready to go. So we'll now start the compressor. It's now on full power, and uh, these thermometers are a little bit biased, but it's about 0 0.4 degrees, so this one is a little bit lower. So this is the exhaust side. So then we have to calculate that in when we do the power output calculation. Okay, so it has been running for quite a while now. You can see there is a temperature difference of about two and a half degrees. And remember you have to add about half a degree here, so it's two and a half degrees. And the unit uses 500 watts and the water flow is about 200 liters per hour, which divided by 3.6 is about 55 milliliters per second. One milliliter of water weighs one gram. And if you heat up one gram of water, you have added 4.19 joules. So in this case, 55 times 4.19 is about 230 times the temperature difference, which is 2.5 degrees, is 576 joules per second, which is 576 watt. So that is about 1965 BTU, or is it miles per cubic Fahrenheit? I don't know. Now this efficiency is of course much less than what you would expect considering that a split system usually has a ratio of around 4 to 1, where it needs 1 watt to transport 4 watts. But the problem is that it's very cold in my shed right now and the volume of air that is being pulled through the evaporator is always the same. So on a cold day like this there is less thermal energy available to extract from the air. Also the temperature difference is lower which makes it harder for the thermal energy to be absorbed by the evaporator. Also, there's no insulation on the container or the compressor, so that way it also loses an amount of energy that I unfortunately can't measure. So to prove my point about the shed being too cold, I'm going to heat the evaporator with this 2000 watt electric heater so you can see the difference. Okay, so I've lowered the temperature by just adding cold water and now let's see what it does with the heater on. So it's now getting nice and hot and you can see that the temperature difference increased and therefore the efficiency went up. So the output is now around 800 watts, which is already a lot better of course. So next summer when it's hot outside again, I will do the final test to prove the pudding. So we'll make a video about that next year. Until that time I will fill the system with antifreeze to protect it during the winter months. And next year after I've done the final test, I will also put the covers back on or cover it because I will have to make adjustments because the container is too big and I will also insulate where necessary. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and please go check out my merch because that would really help me out a lot with making these videos. Please like, share and subscribe, turn on the notification bell and see you next time.